Good afternoon again. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here. This is the second video discussion for today as we take a look at strengthening Tropical Storm Gonzalo and what very well might be eventually here, Tropical Storm Hannah in the Gulf of Mexico. I am now becoming more concerned about that system. In just a few hours' time, things have really changed. The global models are indicating much more favorable conditions across the Atlantic Basin into the Gulf of Mexico and we definitely have a lot to discuss here so let's get on with it in this second update today we take a look at the National Hurricane Center homepage here is Gonzalo we'll get to this in a moment this is invest area 91 L practically in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico and the odds now up to about 80 percent that this will go on to become at least a tropical depression and they say that that a tropical depression is likely to form during the next day or two as it moves west northwest at about 10 miles per hour obviously interests in the western gulf of mexico need to keep an eye on this system specifically the texas coast but even the north part of this system up here along the louisiana coast and the offshore waters need to watch this as well so what do we got? Well, looking at the vorticity signature, this is what we have now. This updated very recently, and our system in the Gulf here, Invest 91L, definitely looking more robust uh, with its vorticity signature, and I'll show you that on a visible satellite loop in a moment. And here's our small system, Gonzalo, down in the deep tropics uh, at around 9 degrees, 10 degrees of latitude, something like that and more energy coming off the coast of Africa. I, I guess this is the beginning. This is where it all starts uh, a little bit sooner than I thought it would, but here we are nevertheless. Okay, so here's 91L. A couple of things to note as we look at this. Check out the low clouds, these little, little feeder clouds. Uh, let's use blue to really help to highlight this. These little feeder clouds that are coming in here, streaming in definitely feeding this system uh, obviously the water is very warm we've been over that it's 29 30 Celsius all through here the thing that's going against it that for now is the general lack of organization to the thunderstorms there's a little bit more in the way of banding going on if you look closely but you know that's kind of stretching it it's, it's a large circulation area in here and so it's got a ways to go before it can really um, take off. And that's mainly because of the organization of the system overall. Uh, what's concerning a little bit is the amount of energy that it's trying to pull in over a large area. I mean, look, it's coming all the way off the Atlantic across the Florida Peninsula with this system, this little band, if you will. There's another band right in here. Uh, we've got that inflow that I talked about on this side. There's a stronger band over here. They're just kind of spread out. So if this can consolidate around that common area of vorticity, then this will take off. And it could easily become a tropical storm. And we'll just have to see where it goes from there. We'll talk about impacts and what to expect and where to expect and when to expect in just a moment. Meanwhile, out in the Atlantic, very impressive tropical storm Gonzalo here trying uh, to ramp up and become the season's first hurricane. Uh, pretty good outflow overall with the system, deep convection around it. It doesn't quite look as, uh, as organized. I don't know, this little part down here looks kind of weird, a um, little disheveled along the north side of it, but this is probably temporary. Uh, the, the modeling, especially the GFS, really indicating uh, that this strengthens up and probably becomes the season's first hurricane as it approaches the Windward Islands and vicinity in the next few days. I went over that in greater detail in the first update from today. If you didn't catch that, maybe you're new to the channel or what have you. I did do another update just a few hours ago and uh, so check that one out for more details on this system now let's look at this from a uh, perspective here i don't know why that popped up from the perspective of the european here let's get the right i thought i had it set but oh well uh from 
this perspective, the whole Atlantic Basin here, at least the North Atlantic, and uh, I'll show you what's what. That's kind of a street. There we go. Um, so here's the west coast of Africa right here. There is Gonzalo. Here's 91L. And this, again, is the vorticity signature. This is my favorite layer to look at for the most part. This really shows me the structure, as I said yesterday in my update, if the lower part of these tropical cyclones is intact, it's got a good base, if you will, that's what I look for. That's not necessarily what the National Hurricane Center specialists look at. Now, I have no idea. Uh, maybe a, your favorite TV meteorologist, I don't know what they look at. This is just what I look at. I've been doing this for two decades, and this is the basis for what I generally go on, because if this layer, the very bottom part, is intact and very well consolidated, then everything else usually stacks up with that. So this is what this is kind of the reasoning why I look at this layer of the atmosphere. We call this the 850 millibar layer right there. It is the cyclonic vorticity or spin, and this is from the ECMWF or the Euro from the 12Z run, which means it was initialized at 8 a.m. Eastern time or 12 Zulu, 12 UTC. And what we're going to track are these little features here. This is an analysis. This is a snapshot of what's happening. That's 91L. There's Gonzalo. And this is the model interpretation of that same layer of the atmosphere with 91L and Gonzalo and more energy about to come off Africa. All right, so let's take a look. Take a look at what we got. This is uh, every 24 hours, this resolution. So here's this where we start today. Wednesday, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So we'll just call it Wednesday morning. Here's Thursday morning. And it doesn't do a lot with Gonzalo here. The, the GFS much more enthusiastic. But here, it's definitely trying to ramp up 91L where the GFS doesn't. So a little bit of an interesting battle between the two there. 48 hours out. Again, not much really with Gonzalo. But this really starts to come together more and more with what could easily be Hannah. If all of this comes to pass, uh, another disturbance here and yet another one crossing through the Cape Verde Islands or Cape Cabo Verde Islands and then another one still over interior Africa and it's not even August yet. How about that? 72 hours out. Now this is where it gets a little bit concerning for Texas. First of all, it has not much with Gonzalo. So I again will refer you to my earlier video I already went over my expected impacts, etc. Assuming the GFS is right. Either way, you guys down here in the windwards, Barbados, St. Lucia, down to Trinidad, Tobago, and points in between, obviously you're going to want to keep an eye on Gonzalo. You don't need me to tell you that. And you should expect impacts. Something's going to happen. Rain, squally conditions, maybe hurricane conditions. We don't know for sure yet. These small systems can really ebb and flow and back again very quickly. So right now I'm going to focus on this, okay? Uh, approaching the Texas coastline. So let's look at a different region that will help us zoom in. This will be a lot more helpful than the wider shot. And so let's switch it over real quick to the Western Atlantic uh, view. And so here it is, again, the same time frame, 72 hours out. And the signature here in the Euro fairly impressive you know it's it's not the most I've ever seen not by any stretch but that's down there getting close to the Matagorda Bay area uh, in the Big Bend area of Texas very storm surge prone um, you know anything coming in from the east like this would put uh, the onshore flow across a good deal of the Northwest Gulf so High Island Bolivar Galveston all the way down to Freeport and even southwest Louisiana would have some flooding issues. You guys know that. You get that onshore flow, that's what happens. And um, and this is a good extent too where you can actually see the reflection of Gonzalo there. Not very impressive overall. And you know what? Just to show you real quick, this is the Euro. That's the GFS at the exact same time frame. So it's flipped. See? Much more impressive Gonzalo, and pfft, not much at all, for 91L or Hannah or whatever it might be. So we go back to the Euro, 
that's just, you know, it's the way it is sometimes. Why are they different? Well, that's a whole other story for another day. Um, very difficult to explain. It has to do with the math and the physics and how each model handles heat and the resolution of what's going on. It's just, it's a whole other issue. But nevertheless, kind of conflicting signals regarding Gonzalo and certainly what would be maybe Hannah here. So that's 72 hours. By 96, our system is inland now, uh, perhaps very near to Corpus Christi, and that is the vorticity signature of an impressive tropical cyclone. So this tells me that the Euro from day three here to day four indicate strengthening and then even at day five strangely wow it continues to strengthen even over texas now that's bizarre but maybe the model is really seeing and this is what concerns me is it seeing a very favorable environment in this area again you only need it favorable where the system is who cares what's happening over here or if there's sinking air out here or down here or whatever Remember Michael, and I'm just drawing the comparison here, all Michael needed was enough of a favorable atmosphere and ocean setup in about that one area that I've highlighted in purple. That's where the most deepening or strengthening of Michael took place, and it became a Category 5 hurricane. I'm just pointing out that all you in Harvey, same thing just a few years ago now, just a short distance from shore really strengthened quickly and we know what happened so this has my attention to the point where as I mentioned earlier I've got plans I've already got a plane ticket and everything to go to Arizona Friday to study the monsoon but that's probably gonna have to wait it's like ugh, you gotta be kidding me because I really like it out west the monsoon is very interesting to me and there's a lot that can be learned from it and it's part of my geographic um, I'm a geographer. That's what my degree is in. I studied meteorology and other things, hurricanes, as part of my geography degree. Um, but hurricanes are what I do, right? That's, that's why I have the logo on the shirt there. Um, so that's concerning to me to see it really ramp up like that. And uh, especially as it gets inland, it's like, really? So you folks down there in Texas, uh, and this is the area that I'm talking about, all through here you really need to watch this closely okay and I'm sure local media from Houston South is really gonna start picking up on this recon is on the way out there they fly out from Keesler Air Force Base uh, over here in the Biloxi area and they're gonna fly down to this area today and check out what's happening with 91L it still has plenty of uh, golf to work with and you know the way the Euro shows it kinda comes in like that I don't know. It's going to be an interesting setup for sure. We'll obviously know a lot more uh, once recon flies and then we go into tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. I, you know, if I'm going to go, I got to leave tomorrow morning. You know what I mean? I got to drive all the way to Texas if I'm going to do this and that's a haul. Um, so lots of planning, lots of stress on the family, so forth and so on. But hey, that's why I do this and um, we'll see what happens. So, uh, that's it for the updates for today, video-wise. I'll post stuff on Twitter, of course. Uh, to all of our patrons on Patreon, I'm able to use that, the app, and the Patreon interface as like my own little mini blogosphere. It has like blog, and literally, it has blogging capability, kind of Facebook, Twitter integration. I can post videos, so everybody following on Patreon, uh, I'll be posting stuff there as well. Uh, as well as our Hurricane Insider, Hurricane Track Insider chat. Just a lot going on. But the bottom line, things are happening quickly now. And I really cannot explain that. And, you know, I don't, I'm not one of these alarmist people. We went from two days ago thinking, eh, it's going to be a couple weeks before things start to get busy, to the potential of our first hurricane the potential for a rapidly strengthening system, at least the Euro suggests that, approaching Texas, and more systems in the pipeline uh, from there coming off the coast of Africa. My, how things changed, and why did it? I, I, the background state must be flipping very quickly. 
That's all I can attribute this to because I also recall uh, like Dr. Ventress the other day, Michael Ventress tweeting out that a convectively coupled, the suppressed part of the convectively coupled Kelvin wave was moving through the Atlantic Basin and we shouldn't expect much with it. You know, remember that tweet? Yes. You know, so who knows? Here we are. I guess it's all part of 2020. Um, so my first video I'll do in the morning, uh, probably around 10, 11 a.m. Eastern time, somewhere around there. And we'll look at the overnight model guidance. And then tomorrow afternoon, again, I'll do another video just like I did today. Basically two videos every time I have a chance. All right. So there you go. Uh, as always, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it more than you know. Without you, no reason for me to be here. Have a great rest of your afternoon. I am Mark Settles for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with much more for you tomorrow.